In this eFolio tutorial, we're going to be focusing on managing pages and the page properties that influence behavior and visibility within your site. Whether you're using our tools through a license in my eFolio or as a user within eFolio Minnesota, the work that we go through in this session will be the same in either tool. We're focusing on the right-hand side of your screen where you see the pages identified. In an earlier tutorial, we talked about default pages. Those oftentimes come through the selection of a profile that you have access to when you're signing up for your first account. It might be the generic student profile, which gives you the layout you currently see on the screen or it might be more like the professional profile where you see one addition and a couple of changes. Employment is a page, coursework is not. Organizations who license eFolio can also define customized page layouts for their users. So you might experience a different set of defaults aligned with learning outcomes or workforce tasks, or it might be that your organization uses it to track your own professional development, and so they have used a goal layout for the page structure. Any of them work, but all of them can be redefined by you. That's what we're going to look at in this session. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the concept of adding a new page. You notice that there's a home page and there are several pages sub-level to it. We're going to add another page at the sub-level. So we'll click on the home page with our left mouse button and we'll go to add, which allows us to add a page under this one. The properties for the page appear. We're going to Name our page Employment History. Well, I think we'll make it Employment Experience instead. And we're going to give it a shortcut of Employment. Now, the shortcut allows you to share a specific page as a URL. We usually keep the URL shortcut in all lowercase, and we don't put any punctuation or spaces into that phrase. At this time, we'll leave the status of the page to be enabled. And I want to point out that as you work through each field and each selection in this property screen, the help displayed to the right of this properties box will explain not only what you're seeing, but why you might be filling it out and reaffirm the information I just shared with you. We'll be building the page, but we're not going to disable it because our site is still private. No one's going to see it until we release the entire site. But you notice that I have the option of disabling it or even hiding it from the public view. Hidden pages can be used to create custom navigations or to share a specific page such as job references with someone without making it part of your public site. You can also identify things like when the page was last edited. Then you can identify what format that should take. And you can build an RSS feed out from the center column of your page, notifying people who subscribe to your web page when you've made changes. We'll start with the basics. Go ahead and OK this. And you'll notice that the page has been added as the last item in our page listing. Now we can also change the name of a page. So let's say that I want to have personal info read contact info. I click on the page. This time I move directly into the properties for that page and I'll simply change the word personal to contact. I might also wish to change the URL shortcut 
to correspond with the title of the page, and I will OK it. And you see that the name of that page has now been changed from personal info to contact info. If I would have had any content on that page at that time, it would not have affected it. It only changes the naming. And those changes immediately influence what you see when you preview the site. So you'll notice the contact info and employment experience are visible on the site listing at this time. If I want to reorder or resequence the pages, I can do that as well. Perhaps I want employment experience, as an example, to be above education. Right now, we'll put it between contact info and education. So I will use my left mouse button to click and hold that page name and drag it up in the listing. You'll notice a horizontal line appears between contact info and education. So when I release the mouse button, the employment experience page falls in between the two. Now likewise, I can create a subpage to one of my pages in the sequence by moving a page under it. Let's say I wanted to make coursework a page that was below education, in other words, a subpage to education, instead of being at an equal level. We refer to these as parent and child relationships or subpages. We'll take the coursework page, again, I'll hold on it with my left mouse button, and I'll move it until it hovers over education. You notice the dotted line surrounding the word education. When I release my mouse button, the page becomes a subpage to education. Let's look at the impact of that in preview. I'll click preview. And you'll see I have the home page contact info, employment experience, education. When I click on education, coursework appears below it. So I have the ability to control the navigation in levels as well as with a linear approach. Now it's also possible to add a page that is a sublevel that has not been created before. So let's go ahead and add references under our employment experience. This time, rather than clicking on the home page, I'll click on employment experience, and I'll add a page, and I'll name it references. Now, one of the things that happens with references is that you don't necessarily want everyone to have access to them until you're ready to share them. So we're going to use the status of hidden to influence the properties of this page. That way, not everyone who has access to our eFolio site will have access to that page unless we share it with them. I'll OK that. And what you'll notice is references has been added. But what you'll also notice is that when I make the home page the active page and go to preview this site, under employment experience, nothing opens up to display references as it did when I put coursework under education. That's because the references page is hidden from view at this time. Finally, one of the things you might wish to do would be to remove a page. Maybe you've decided that you don't want or need the photo gallery page in your set of pages. And so you'd like to remove that. It's as simple as clicking on it, deleting it, responding to the message 
But before I click yes, I want you to notice that if I delete a page, it's going to delete not only that page, but all of the pages that are subbed to it. That's fine with Photo Gallery. It's the only page in this grouping. But if I was using the delete for employment experience or for education, saying yes would also delete the pages sub to it. So there you have it. In a nutshell, that's what influences the page properties and managing the pages of your site and gives you more opportunity for flexibility in terms of how people will navigate your site. You can keep the list essentially short by employing the subpage structure. You can also influence the hierarchy of how people look at your site by influencing the sequence. An example there is my own preference is not to have my contact info at the very top. I like to have that either at the base of my page or sometimes I want it as a subpage to another area. Your choices will influence how you take care of your pages. In future Tutorials will be looking more at how to influence the content that goes on to those pages, and we'll continue to work back and forth to help you explore and advance your knowledge of working within the eFolio structures.